Hey everyone, and this is Shepard, this time with a little walkthrough on how I like to play with the Brave Gunlance. This is a bit of a style that I've adapted from what I've seen Omnitoad do a lot of. Uh, check him out on Twitch TV slash Omnitoad. He is a very good Gunlance player. And I've, I've done a couple tweaks uh, to suit my own playstyle a little bit, but basically... With the Brave Gun Lance, you are given many different defensive options. You, of course, have your shield. But, as with all Brave styles, you have, have the ability to go into a Brave stance. And then beyond that, the Brave Gun Lance gets the guard point when you do a quick reload as well. And you're going to be seeing me at various times throughout this fight use those different abilities in order to keep myself on the offensive. And then you're going to see me use a very interesting defensive ability offensively. So a good defense is a good offense, and a good offense is a good defense. That's basically what we learn. So what you're seeing here is I'm prioritizing a combo that's going to fill up my Brave Meter very quickly. So I'm alternating between pokes and Brave shots. You can see I was very quickly able to get up to a full Brave mode. And now I'm going to start trying to do things to make sure that my heat gauge gets up to red. Uh, it's not the end of the world if you don't have artillery plus two and you have a hard time getting into red and maintaining it and you end up in orange instead. But the red is really r one you be where you want to be in terms of being able to do the most melee damage. Zamtrios is of course a really good example of a monster to show off the various pros and cons of the gun lance. At various stages of the fight, you either want to really be able to use as many shells as possible or as much melee as possible. When he's in his ice form here, the, the shelling part becomes much more effective. Lots of his body, parts of his body are armored. So rather than bouncing off of them like you would at white sharpness, you can go ahead and use your shelling in order to break those pieces and get flinches. Okay, so you can see I'm a little bit of a tight spot. Don't worry about it. Uh, this was all part of the plan. I promise. See, now that we're at the top of our red gauge, we can use a wyvern fire. And because we're in brave mode, you can tell that comes out very quickly. Uh, new to this game is a fast wyvern fire that is available by default in alchemy mode, as well as when you are full on uh, brave, brave activated. You see there he got out of position, so rather than waiting for a good defensive opportunity, I used my absolute evasion in order to get closer to him. And you'll notice there that I'm using my guard points um, to make sure that I'm going to be able to get back into a combo even faster than I normally would. Okay, so I got a little greedy there which forces me to use my Absolute Evasion. Normally you would want to Brave out of that and then go right back into a combo against him. That's okay though. So you can do a Brave Reload into a Slam, which pairs very nicely into the Brave Shotgun Burst which actually you'll see has a blue glow to it. Brave shotgun bursts actually have increased damage to them. So they're even compared to the amount of damage that you get from being able to do rapid shelling. <laughs> you see me doing that a couple times now at the end of a, any sort of normal hit. If you start shelling, each successive shell comes out faster and does more damage. There are some occasions where it's difficult to tell whether or not you're better served to just sheath or whether you should go ahead and try and do a lunging attack. Of course, whenever you're being attacked, though, if there's a beam attack, a quick reload can very quickly be followed by a brave stance. Always keep that in mind in case you're in a tight spot. You can see that that came out almost instantly. See there, I, I blocked instead of uh, 
did a guard point. That wasn't on purpose, that was a mistake. But it's the sort of thing as you're practicing your guard points, feel free to just try and get the timing so that you do a guard point, but at the very least you don't get hit because you're in an actual guard. Until you feel a little bit more confident about how quickly the guard point comes out and how you can work that into other combos. So this, of course, is the ideal way to, to approach it. And see, now that I'm in green sharpness, I'm going to go ahead and be very liberal with my use of shelling. Why not? Get a full burst off. It's a lot of damage. And we'll do a sharpen. But you're going to see we're, we're in a little bit of a tight spot. We're out of brave mode. We have no shells loaded. We, we want, we're going to want to get back into it. So you're going to see me trying to do a couple of interesting combos. Rather than forcing myself to do a brave full reload, which I generally try to avoid, you'll see I'm doing a combination of brave up slashes as well as brave shelling to get into the stance very quickly. You see I'm already there. And just in time, I noticed that my heat gauge was uncapped, so I made sure to get myself locked into red. Which worked out great because now that he is in his fat state, we're going to want to be doing a lot of melee combos. And this poke poke slam, depending on your timing and, and what sort of position the monster's in, you might want to work in an upswing after two pokes. For my money though, I prefer the flexibility of just having the two pokes and the slam. It's, it's a lot of damage. It's not bad. You can see there, I, I did a little bit of a misplay. I should have been able to either get, be a little less greedy and brave out of that, or at the very least, absolute evasion out of it. The more time you spend rolling around the ground, the less time you're spending stabbing the monster. Always keep that in mind. That little Zamite there is uh, clearly a, a future boss monster. He was able to push me almost halfway across the map. <laughs> it's kind of entertaining. So again, when he's in his ice mode here, and, and this is the same thing for most monsters when they're charging up, your full bursts and your multi-bursts like that do a lot of damage. Which is why you want to try to be in a, a fully loaded state at all times in case you have to do burst like that. Same thing, of course, with your Wyvern Fire. And even though I haven't demonstrated it, it is possible to go from a full shotgun burst directly into a Wyvern Fire. Now, in many cases, the monster is going to have tripped and fallen away from you, so that won't work out. But that is always an option. Okay, so just under eight minutes. Not a terrible time. And again, really, what you need to focus on the most as you're practicing Brave Gunlance is really timing those guard points out. It allows you to counterattack so much faster, and when you've already slammed, you've got so many options while you're in Brave mode. You can immediately go into Pokes, you can do a full burst, or you can do a Wyvern Fire. Of course, the Lance does have a number of high-ranging options, which I didn't use too often. These, these do have less damage than what you would get from a normal slam into a poke combo. But you can tell that really the weapon is very good at being able to cut tails, if necessary. That upswing has excellent vertical range. So I'm, I'm working on a much longer compendium version of Brave Gunlance. Uh, only time will tell if I will ever actually finish it to my satisfaction and release it, but I really wanted to be able to get something out about the Brave Gunlance and how I think it could really go a long way towards helping people that have Monster Hunter Double Cross really learn to play and, and enjoy this interesting style. It, it really does make the Gunlance kind of fun to use again, and in spite of the damage nerfs it's had over the many years, 
I think it's a, a weapon worth using, especially if you like shooting things and blowing them up. So that's it for now. Until next time, this is Shepard saying good luck and have a good hunt.